Hey ladies and gentlemen from near and far, it's Heiko, we're back on my roof. Um, there was already one video where I showed you how I started removing an old fireplace slash chimney and then we ended up with a big hole in the roof. Now I'm back on my roof and I'm going to be uh, repairing this and prepping it for a freestanding wood burning stove. And uh, I almost forgot to take you guys up here and I'm gonna set up for a time-lapse. All right, so I'm in the process of uh, tearing the shingles off and some of the underlayment and uh, just exposing enough of the roof so that I can actually repair it. So let's see here what's going on. So this is a first experiment of me recording some short video clips and then adding a bunch of time lapse to it to just show you the process. So here I'm removing um, the old roofing, the shingles and the underlayment around the old chimney opening in our roof so that I can get to the plywood underneath. Uh, we need to cut away uh, quite a bit of the plywood to be able to repair it. And then once, uh, actually not just the plywood repair, but also the, the roof structure, three of the roof trusses end on a load bearing wall that is kind of a 45 degree corner of our living room. Uh, so they are not supported by the exterior wall, but they are supported by an interior uh, wall that uh, creates the front of our old fireplace, which we're trying to get rid of. And so I have to get the decking off to get to those cut trusses and then re-establish those trusses and sandwich them uh, in plywood to make it strong and sturdy and uh, code compliant and all that good stuff. So here you see me just tearing off the shingles. Um, first I used just a shovel to get the bigger parts off but then um, I want to remove as little of our roofing as possible so that I can kind of tie into it and when you take uh, strips of shingles off you always have to remove a bunch of uh, nails. Uh, I also didn't want to leave any old staples or nails in place because that's just going to give you lumps and bumps in your new uh, under your new shingles so I wanted this as clean as I can and then um, Eventually, you will see me uh, tearing some of the plywood off. It's uh, all a, a work in progress. Uh, Thinking-wise, making plans, I, I just uh, think about problems as they arise. So you see me cutting some of the underlayment away to identify uh, where the, the individual pieces of plywood actually end. And then um, I'll get the big pry bar out. Yeah, I'll cut more underlayment away. And then the first piece of plywood comes off. And that was uh, quite a exciting moment I've been working towards. So this, the first piece that has this big old cutout in it is now coming off. This will all be replaced with fresh plywood. We also noticed around the old chimney opening that there was a little bit of some water intrusion and some uh, damage to the plywood. It had uh, swollen and, and uh, the lamination of that plywood had slowly given up. And uh, so it's, it's all very, you know, tedious work to get this all loose and off. Luckily I have a driveway right next to my house so I can throw everything just from the roof. Now you can see uh, the 2x4 structure that they had framed into the roof there. Um, for a masonry chimney you also have to have certain distances, uh, um, clearances to a chimney uh, for, you know, fire risk prevention, that kind of stuff. He keeps seeing me with a flat bar to poke under those uh, shingles to get the nails loose. And then I always m make an effort to remove all the nails as well. I don't want to have anything stuck under there. And more and more shingles go flying down the roof. And then the starter strip down there, right on the edge of the roof. And then I, I thought, okay, yeah, that's it. That's enough shingles removed. 
Some more underlayman gets cut away. And uh, in between, I always had to uh, sweep the roof decking a little bit because the, the sanding material or the sand, sandy material that's on top of those shingles that comes loose and then a uh, little sand pieces on top of the roof decking makes it really slippery up there and I definitely didn't want to fall off the roof. So that's why I kept doing that. So now I'm measuring um, where is the next truss? Where am I going to make my cut? I just marked it and then um, I thought my trusses would be reliably running 16 inches on center and then I get my uh, circular saw and my long straight edge out and then I get distracted get the saw saw out and and just cut away all those uh, reared angled pieces of two by fours there and just cut those away and I only wanted to leave behind the the actual trusses themselves you can see them already there sticking out three pieces that were all chopped off by whoever framed in this chimney opening and um, they also had a little stubby pieces of the ends of the trusses that uh, created pretty much the rafter tails but uh, of course, I also removed those. I wanted to re uh, replace them with complete pieces all the way out to the fascia board where the gutter is supported. So this is all going. I wanted to make it as uh, solid as I can. Sawzaw is really a cool tool for that kind of work. Goes quick, cuts through nails. Uh, I'm always standing on top of the old fireplace. There's still lots of material to be removed down there. The old firebox is surrounded by concrete blocks. So now I just cut. No, I, I didn't cut. I just marked the location where I want to make a cut through the roof decking. Uh, what I thought was along a roof truss. But then I realized that this truss had a big old curve in it like it was not running parallel to the other one unfortunately I realized that after I made the cut so then in frustration I ended up removing even more shingles and more underlayment and then cut it away to the next truss so the area of my repair kept getting bigger and bigger so now this is the moment where I realize oh what's going on here why is this not where I thought it should be. Why is the end of the plywood now hanging in free air and is not supported by um, the truss, but it was really a truss that had a big old curve in it. And now I'm taking more shingles off and there's going to be more underlayment removed and then we're going to do that again. This time I paid a little bit more attention on the end of the roof right next to the gutter. You can actually see the rafter tail, so to speak. So I could really make sure that I cut it along the right line. The shingles were nailed down pretty well. In my area, uh, it gets windy very often. You can see in the background, there's an American flag waving and uh, flying. It is, uh, and the trees are always moving, so it's constantly windy in our area, and we get winds well above 100 miles an hour. And uh, so roof installation has to be done properly, or else the whole stuff is going to go flying. up and down the ladder all day long. I don't know how many steps I got in during this whole project and how many times I squatted down and got back up. After three days of continually doing this, my knees were hurting so badly. So yeah, this is the first piece. Now I have to get the saw out and cut away a little bit more. 
because you want the plywood to end right in the middle of a 2x4 truss so that both pieces that meet there are supported by the 2x4. So here we go, the next cut. Let's hope I have more luck this time. A little plunge cut. Saw set to the right depth, so I'm only cutting through the plywood but not into the 2x4. And then we're yanking that off. And this time I got lucky. The truss runs parallel. It's nicely supported. A little bit more cleanup around the edges. And then we can finally get going with the repair of the actual roof structure. Still cutting away a little bit more, a couple of bits and pieces. And now I'm marking the ends of those cut trusses to a 45 degree angle. There's a little bit more to be removed back there. So I did the 45 degrees so the new piece is lying on top of the old and gets uh, supported that way. Fortunately one of the three trusses was cut back so far that it's still under the roof decking so I had to do that out of sight under there but it turned out just as well. So 45 degree. There you go. And then my helper hands up. Uh, now actually I'm going down and, and I cut the rafter ends so that it meets nicely with the fascia board there, the right angle. And then I um, noticed that the cut trusses, they're all hanging a little low. So um, from the gable end, there is one truss that is in perfect shape. And then the one that I'm sitting on, I, I lay a straight edge in between. And then I notice that the trusses have all sagged a little bit. And uh, so then I end up using some vertical support pieces to uh, bump those up or jack them up. And then um, now you can see me here in a second to clamp those uh, new truss pieces onto the old. Mark him, cut him. Here we go, the clamps come out. So now they're all sitting nicely parallel. And the, the darker colored wood there, um, that's the old part of the truss. And I'm uh, jacking them up so that uh, measured with my straight edge, the, the roof is a flat surface and doesn't have a dip in it. Here again, checking. And I'm hammering those vertical supports in place. And then also marking them. And then I hand them, hand them down to my helper. I have a uh, compound miner saw on a stand sitting down there. I guess a professional contractor would have just cut it by hand with a skill saw, but I'm not that. So I make probably lots more mistakes. Things take me three times as long and I use uh, different techniques to get to the final product. So here's the first one. Splice that into place. And the nail gun comes out. The bottom cord of the truss you can't see right now, but they were all, of course, also cut off for this uh, old chimney opening. And they will also be replaced or uh, a new piece will be spliced in. 
I had to cut the bottom cord also at the right angle so it fits under the the top 2x4 at the right angle of course yeah, I think I'm, I'm cutting those 45 degree angles right now yeah, and the first bottom piece is going in there hard to tell from this angle and up and down the ladder yeah, I've already made a little bit more progress. You can see uh, two new spliced in pieces with a couple vertical supports. This is number three going in. That's the one that's kind of out of sight underneath the roof decking there. I just didn't want to take another piece of roof decking off. I didn't want to make the repair surface even larger. I think what I was indicating is that I was just poking through uh, the roof decking with my sawzall and I made a hole in the shingle. There you go. So that's number three. Marked it. Needs to be cut off. And now I got too lazy to go down, down the roof and to cut it with my uh, compound miter saw I ended up just cutting it freehand with a circular saw see I, I'm definitely not a contractor I don't even own a skill saw but I learned a lot since our last uh, construction pro project at the house I've, I'm getting more and more uh, comfortable with um, the circular saw and the nail gun and I'm checking again for a level surface of the roof I didn't you see the top cord I did uh, 45 degree cuts on all three that I fixed so that the top one is lying on the old one and then before and after the cut I put a vertical in here so before and after and then of course they go all the way out and they are lying on the wall Oh, of course I couldn't hold myself back from using some really long construction screws so these are GRK Torx drive really long ones they go into the top plate and then I put a second one there that connects the top to the bottom cord uh, so they are at least tied together somewhat so I got all three now replaced I have the blocking back in there and I just toenail that in there uh, at least I try to <coughs> I still need to uh, attach the the board out there which probably needs to be replaced sooner or later um, to the ends but yeah so this this is pretty much done I also at the bo bottom cord I put a long screw in um, from one into the other I did that on all three did I yes I did just so there is some sort of a connection and then at the top I did that too at a oh here I only nailed it I guess over there it's kind of under the decking I did it with a screw but uh, now I'm gonna go and cut the first of those of those um, side pieces plywood half inch plywood and see how that fits in here and then I'm only gonna tack it in place with a uh, either short nails or short screws depends on which is going to be easier so and now you see me attach the first layer of plywood to each of those uh, spliced together uh, trusses initially I put it in with uh, I want to say two inch construction screws number nine uh, made by GRK. GRK is kind of my go-to brand these days. And uh, 
I always had to trim off a little piece up there so I could slide it under the roof decking there. And now that's already the second side. So initially just some screws. Uh, I also used the screws to mark where the vertical little supports are. And then at the very end, once all the pieces are in place, I get the nail gun out. I use eight penny nails and I am, uh, oh yeah, right now I'm cutting all the nails loose um, from this old top plate of this uh, load bearing wall that's gonna be removed eventually in our living room, this 45 degree wall. Yeah, and then eventually I'm gonna nail this all off. Uh, Shear strength wise, nails are unbeatable. So tons of eight penny nails that are being shot through the plywood into the two by fours in a kind of a zigzag pattern about six inches apart from each other. That was, uh, that was the instruction from my uh, contractor friend, Mark. Yeah, there you go. Lots of nails. These uh, three trusses, these ends of those trusses are most likely going to be stronger than the rest of the roof structure because plywood does wonders when it comes to shear strength. Uh, I'm in the process of installing a ceiling support box for a wood stove. So this is the ceiling support box. It's upside down so this piece would be at the bottom in, a, in its installed orientation. This is the piece where you would uh, hook up your stovepipe to and then this direction would go your chimney so imagine chimney going out of your roof so chimney pipe and this ceiling support box needs to be installed in your um, framing of your roof structure against the uh, trusses or floor joists or and then uh, you have to have a minimum of two inches sticking out of the finished ceiling. So finished ceiling means drywall, texture, paint. You have to have at least two inches sticking out. I mark three inches because I'm installing it in a non-finished ceiling. So I'm just installing it against uh, um, roof trusses. And then uh, we're still adding five eighths of an inch of drywall, some texture, paint and all that kind of stuff. So I want at least two inches sticking out. I have marked uh, some screw holes that I'm going to be pre-drilling here. They want you to install at least three one and a half inch number eight wood screws on each side. Um, I ultimately will end up putting another row up here, the top cord of the roof truss, but um, I'm only marking these and pre-drill the bottom ones just so that I get it installed. And I will also show you up on top what that looks like inside the uh, framing of your roof so here I'm carrying the roof support no ceiling support box is what this thing is called uh, it's a 12 by 12 inch 24 inches tall up to the uh, roof surface and then I'm trying to fit it in I should have pushed it through my uh, already prepared opening from the bottom so I would have not scratched up the visible section um, now the, the lines that I marked make total sense because I just line up those lines with the bottom of my roof trusses there and then um, struggling a little bit to hold it in place and at the same time put the wood screws in that will hold this thing against uh, the structure. But then once you have two, three in, in place, I'm just checking if it's somewhat plumb. Looks pretty good. So we're gonna put all our 12 screws in. And uh, the, the framing for this opening, of course I prepared that beforehand. Only took a few pieces of two by four and a couple of plywood spacers. In this next section, I'm gonna give you a, a quick recap of what I've done so, so far. So here it goes. Um, we used to have a masonry chimney sticking out of here. You can still see the top of uh, an old fireplace that we have in our house, which I'm in the process of removing. And uh, they also had three trusses shortened, uh, resting on a load-bearing wall that runs here. 
and this load bearing wall is going to be removed the trusses I extended today and I um, sandwiched them in between plywood this is the engineered uh, or the engineers um, recommendation how to do that it's all nailed up in six inch uh, distance between nails in like a zigzag pattern with a couple um, uh, uh, verticals in there as well and then I went ahead after that was done I boxed in an opening for for uh, our ceiling support box here you can see um, short little pieces in between the trusses top and bottom and then I also made a, a couple of sheet metal spacers right here so that the opening in here is exactly 12 by 12 inches just like the boxes and um, as I mentioned earlier I just pre-drilled a couple of holes down there um, let me climb down real quick so you guys can see unfinished ceiling there's my silver line or white line from my sharpie so now I have three inches sticking out unfortunately I scratched it up a little bit so I'm wondering if I maybe get some heat resistant black paint and paint it before I install um, drywall just to make it look pretty so yeah the the line literally is three inches then I will add five five uh, five eighths um, drywall here and uh, then texture and paint around it and then we should be good so yeah I just spaced it all out so that it sits right in between those trusses I've been climbing up and down here all day to make this all happen here so this plywood uh, uh, sandwich here to make the old trusses that kind of were cut here and here's the you can see the load bearing wall this is all gonna be removed um, I already cut the nails that the trusses were nailed into this uh, load bearing wall so when I start demolition from the living room and take the fireplace out then the header should already be relatively loose so we climb up again so now you can see here sandwich some plywood to make it a nice 12 by 12 opening and uh, uh, up here I will put another row of, of screws I don't have to I am already fulfilling the minimum here and then uh, tomorrow I will put the decking on here the uh, almost three-quarter inch plywood uh, lay it right around this box and then at the end I will get my angle grinder or my tin snips out cut the corners and then lay it flat onto the uh, plywood so that will also support this box and then the chimney pipe I have uh, it's called Duratec by Duravent goes right in there and it's actually a twist lock mechanism and then I will have a chimney pipe sticking out with a cap on top uh, most likely I will also have to put some some braces on so that the pipe doesn't get blown over by the wind but yeah this is how you do it if you have a very uh, low attic above your living space so down there this is going to be part of the living room and then I literally only have like 11 12 inches and the box is 24 inches tall so the the part that sticks out you just cut open on the edges and then um, you just fold it over and that's it and you nail it off to the decking yeah and then um, and then you put your sh uh, flashing over top of that with the shingles and everything uh, but maybe I'll show you that in another, another short little video alright you guys I'm done for today I'm completely burned out it's uh, 6.15 I've been in the sun at 86 degrees Fahrenheit all day up here climbing up and down and nailing and cutting and alright you guys understand see you later bye I had some camera issues. Uh, it would constantly stop recording without telling me. So you are going to see uh, quite a few jump cuts. Um, I'm putting the, the rest of the decking on uh, 
mark my lines, nail it down, then you will see me install uh, felt paper as an underlayment. I use a special um, nails for that. They have a really large plastic head that gives uh, the underlayment a little bit more hold. And then you will see me cut down the box, the sides of the box, so I can fold the edges over and nail it to the roof. Then suddenly the shingles are already up to the opening. You want to lay shingles all the way halfway into the opening of that um, roof support box. And then uh, the last thing that I will do in this video is uh, stick the Duratec chimney pipe, which is a double wall chimney pipe, into the opening, twist lock it in place, and then uh, put the proper flashing around it. And that's where we're going to continue on in the next video. So here we go. You see me nailing down those edges. Suddenly there are already shingles there. And then the pipe goes in here in a second. So you want to shingle up halfway into this opening and then you need to put the flashing on. And then you're going to continue putting shingles down over top of the flashing from there. But it, that's going to be in the next video. All right, guys. So we're already at the end. Smear and some nails and that's it.